Hi, I'm Ms. Kristen at the Oosterhout Free Library. If you've ever had a cold, or maybe you just needed a checkup, well, then you've probably gone to the doctor's office. And probably one of those doctors might have been a woman. But did you know that there was a time when women were not allowed to become doctors? Yep, over 100 years ago, there were no women doctors. Now, March is Women's History Month, so I'm going to share with you a story about Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell, the first woman to earn a medical degree in America. Then we can explore the world of medicine with some fun activities. I'll show you how you can listen to someone's heartbeat with a stethoscope that you can make yourself, and we'll explore the importance of washing your hands with a quick activity. So let's get started with the book called, Who Says Women Can't Be Doctors? Let's get started. Who Says Women Can't Be Doctors? The story of Elizabeth Blackwell, written by Tanya Lee Stone, illustrated by Marjorie Priceman, published by Christy Adovino Books, Henry Holt and Company. I'll bet you've met plenty of doctors in your life, and I'll bet lots of them were women. Well, you might find this hard to believe, but there was once a time when girls weren't allowed to become doctors. Back in the 1830s, there were lots of things girls could not be. Girls were only supposed to become wives and mothers, or maybe teachers or seamstresses. Being a doctor was definitely not an option. What do you think changed all that? Or should I say, who? Elizabeth Blackwell, that's who. A tiny wisp of a girl who wanted to explore around every corner and who never walked away from a challenge. This was a girl who had once carried her brother over her head until he backed down from their fight. A girl who tried sleeping on the hard floor with no covers just to toughen herself up. A girl who climbed up to her roof and stretched out as far as possible with a spyglass to see what was happening on the other side of town. So why did she become the first woman doctor? Because one person believed she could and told Elizabeth she was just the kind of smart, determined girl who could change the world. That person was Mary Donaldson. When Elizabeth was 24, she went to visit her friend who was very ill. Mary told Elizabeth that she would have much preferred being examined by a woman. She urged Elizabeth to consider becoming a doctor. At first, Elizabeth could not believe her ears. Even if a girl could be a doctor, why would she want to be one? But Mary's idea gnawed at Elizabeth. Hmm, a female doctor. Elizabeth thought about it the second she got up in the morning. She thought about it during sewing circles. She thought about it over tea. She even dreamed about it at night. Finally, Elizabeth asked doctors and friends. Some thought it would be a good idea, but didn't think there was any way it could be done. Others said it wasn't right. Women are too weak for such hard work. Women aren't smart enough. Some people actually laughed at her. They thought she was joking. Elizabeth didn't see anything funny about a woman becoming a doctor. Elizabeth thought it was a fine idea and her family supported her. She worked as a teacher to earn money and applied to a handful of medical schools. But they all sent back the same answer. No. No women allowed. She tried other schools. More letters arrived at her door. One by one, the answer was always the same. No, 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 no. 
28 no's in all. In different ways, the letters all said the same thing. Women cannot be doctors. They should not be doctors. But Elizabeth didn't believe in, couldn't, or shouldn't. She refused to give up. She was stubborn as a mule, quite rightly. One day, an envelope arrived from a college. She opened it, and everything changed. The answer was... Yes! Elizabeth packed her bags for Geneva Medical School in upstate New York. The townspeople were expecting her. As she walked down the street, some pointed and stared. They whispered to themselves that she must be wicked or crazy. Elizabeth thought that at least the students wanted her there, except they didn't. The teachers had let the students vote on whether or not to allow Elizabeth to come. And the boys, figuring the school would never really accept a girl, said yes. They planned to turn the whole thing into a big joke. But the joke was on them. Their laughter turned to silence as the lady like Elizabeth took her seat. They wondered what kind of girl she was. The kind of girl who wouldn't take the bait. Some thought a girl wouldn't be able to keep up. Except Elizabeth did keep up, often studying past midnight. Elizabeth proved she was as smart as any boy. And soon the boys wanted to know what Elizabeth thought about this or that. It took the townspeople longer to accept her. Some people were afraid of anything new or different. Not Elizabeth. On January 23rd, 1849, Elizabeth graduated with the highest grades in the whole class. She had become the first woman doctor in America. Although many people were proud, others were angry. One doctor even wrote, I hope for the honor of humanity that she will be the last. But as you know, she certainly was not. The End So Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell persevered and became a doctor when many others tried to tell her no, she couldn't. She even started her own medical college and was one of the few doctors to understand the importance of hand washing in preventing the spread of germs. Now back then, doctors really didn't understand that we have germs on our hands that we can't see. So they didn't always wash their hands between treating different patients which meant they were spreading germs to other patients. Yuck! Well, Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell understood how important it is to wash our hands to get rid of germs. But what are germs? Germs are teeny tiny organisms of bacteria or viruses that can cause us to get sick. We can't really see them with our eyes, but they are there. Now this exercise is designed to visualize or see the germs on our hands and show the ways that hand washing can remove them so they don't make us sick. You're going to need about one teaspoon of vegetable oil or olive oil and about two teaspoons of ground cinnamon powder, four sheets of paper towel and a soap and a sink. You're going to take about one teaspoon of cooking oil and drizzle it onto the open palm of your hands and then coat your hands. Then you're going to add about two teaspoons of ground cinnamon powder like this uh, to your hands and then rub them together, the oil and the cinnamon, lather it over the entire surface of your hands. Now you're going to place one clean sheet of paper towel onto your tabletop and then place your hand print on the paper towel. A cinnamon oil handprint left behind will symbolize the germs of unwashed hands because remember the cinnamon is going to be like the germs that we can't see on our hands. 
Then you're going to go to the sink and rinse your hand with water for a short amount of time, just water. Then repeat again with the clean paper towel and make a handprint. Now this will symbolize the germs that are left behind when you only rinse them with water. Did your handprint change a little bit? Well, now we're going to wash our hands with soap and water for 30 seconds. You could try singing the happy birthday song to yourself. And then once you have washed your hands, repeat it again with another piece of clean paper towel and find out, see what kind of handprint did you get on the paper towel? How did it change? You should see that properly cleaned hands removed the germs and left little to no handprint on that last paper towel. Now remember, we can't actually see the germs on our hands. That's why it's important to wash our hands before we touch any food or our faces or after activities where our hands might get dirty, like when we sneeze or use the restroom or after we're playing outside. Try this activity out for yourself and see what kind of results you get. Thanks to Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell, there were many other trailblazing women doctors to come, like Dr. Virginia Apgar, who created a way to examine newborn babies that is still used today. She would listen to the baby's heartbeat with a stethoscope, just like your doctor listens to your heartbeat. Hey, have you ever heard a heartbeat before? Well, you probably don't have a stethoscope lying around your house but I can show you how you can make your own stethoscope using materials that you probably do have at your house. You're going to need a paper towel tube like this and some duct tape. Now you also need something to help the sound travel through the tube to your ears. You can use whatever you have. Uh, you can use aluminum foil or a balloon or even a plastic funnel. Use whichever you have at your house or try all three and see which one works the best. You're also going to need a family member volunteer to be your patient. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the aluminum foil and attach it to the end of the tube and then use some duct tape to fasten it just like this. Now, if you have a balloon, you can use the balloon or if you have a funnel, you could try that or like I said, Use all three of them. Ask a family member to volunteer to be your patient so that you can test out your stethoscope. But first, the doctor needs to know where is the heart located in a body? Now think back to when you've been to the doctor's office and they've listened to your heart with a stethoscope. Did they listen on the right side of your chest or on the left side of your chest? Which was it? It was the left side. So locate the heart on the left side of their body. And if you're not sure what that is, you can ask your patient to use their hand to touch just from their, where their clavicle is. And just below where the hand ends is where the heart is located. And then you're going to place your tube up to your ear, one side, and the other side, right on their chest where the heart is. And then listen closely to see what you can hear. Do you hear a Or can you hear a heart beating? Pretty cool, huh? Here's a hint. It might be hard to hear if it's too noisy in the room or your patient is wearing a heavy sweater. I'll put the directions and link to this activity in the description box below. Try it out for yourself and find out what you can hear. Now, there are lots of other amazing women doctors to learn about, like eye doctor and inventor Dr. Patricia Bass and Dr. June Almeida, who discovered the first coronavirus. You can learn more about them by checking out these books available at the library. I hope you had fun. I hope you keep exploring and see you next time. Bye.